fine so after studying contact angle the lesson we are going to learn today is called surface energy that's another important concept we need to learn when it comes to surface tension so what is let's see what this surface energy is all about when we uh, began the lesson of surface energy i explained you that uh, the surface energy is surface tension is actually a phenomenon created due to the uh, attractive forces acting on the uh, liquid particles on the surface so let's go back to that again let's consider some liquid particles on the surface one two three four like this all right liquid particles on the surface so i'll take one of those particles and uh, if i if we take a particle in the inside the surface now there there can be different particles inside the surface too no? and we discuss when we consider particles inside the surface they will experience forces uh, in every direction hence the resultant is going to be uh, zero but on the surface uh, there are going to be forces in this direction all right so mainly because of these horizontal lateral forces uh, a membrane kind of formation is created i'm repeating uh, the same thing membrane kind of formation is created that's why surface tension is created and uh, in that tutorial itself you people might have had a doubt so what happens to these forces now because of these forces won't it come down there is a resultant force downwards now so what happens due to, due to those forces even though there is a force acting downwards this particles are still uh, remaining on the surfaces then something has happened so on these particles what is happening a certain type of energy stored even though they want to come down they are up it's like a potential energy right uh, we normally draw um, let's say there is a there is a planet from the planet when there is an object away from the planet like this this object will be experiencing a force right the gravitational force but still the object doesn't fall it's there so if an object you take an object away from earth against that force that means an energy will be stored on that object we call that object gravitational sorry we call that energy gravitational potential energy likewise the energy stored on these each of these uh, liquid particles now every particle will be experiencing the same thing yeah this downward resultant force against the that downwards resultant force there is some work done so the object is uh, remaining on the surface the the work done against that force is converted to this energy when you do you now when you take an object away from earth's gravitational field uh, you are performing a work against that force that work you perform against that force is converted to gravitational potential energy uh, something similar to that here uh, something similar that is happening here uh, these objects even though there is a resultant force acting downwards the objects still remain their molecules actually still remain on the surface that means uh, there is an energy stored in these liquid particles on the surface that is what you call surface energy so if you want to define surface energy you will say energy stored in the in the liquid particles on a on a liquid surface simple as that okay that is what you call surface energy now earlier we learned uh, a definition for surface tension one was the first definition we learned for surface tension was i hope you can remember uh, surface tension is equal to the force acting on the liquid surface divided by length force acting on a liquid surface per unit length that's how we define surface tension and there's another definition for surface tension that is based on this surface energy the second definition for surface tension is this that is going to be in surface energy actually sorry surface energy divided by surface area see everything is surface see every adjective is surface because we are talking about surface tension so if you want to put this into words you can say surface tension is the surface energy stored per unit surface area all right so here energy over area is also surface tension so using this if you want to define a unit uh, you can say newton per meter if not uh, using this if you want to define a unit you can say 
joules per meter square sometimes in mcqs they might give you say these units and ask are they appropriate for surface tension so they are appropriate but normally we use this unit so this is a rough idea about surface energy if whenever you see a liquid surface you should know that uh, there is an energy stored in the on that liquid surface because of this phenomenon all right fine uh, in addition to that, in addition to surface energy, there is one more thing we you need to know when it comes to surface tension that is called free surfaces. Understanding this concept is very, very important. You cannot use now uh, for surface tension, now we have two equations here. So, and I, uh, right, fine. So, if you write any, if, this, if you put this into an equation with uh, symbols, you can say surface tension is equal to force over length. And if you put that into e uh, another equation, that is force equals to surface tension into length. That is what we learnt in the uh, first tutorial, didn't we? Right. And this equation can be converted to surface tension is equal to surface energy over area. That means uh, surface energy is equal to surface tension into area, another equation. You need to know this concept to apply these equations for different uh, situations. Okay. Now, what is a free surface? It's a very uh, easy concept to study. Uh, now, we uh, discuss certain uh, situations. We discuss about uh, meniscus, we discuss about uh, water drop, we discuss about a bubble and all those things. And uh, yes, and there are a few uh, areas we can discuss. Now, for example, uh, imagine there is a liquid surface. There are different types of liquid surface forms. So, think of, let's say, uh, think of liquid surfaces now. One, I'll start with uh, liquid menisci. Uh, yeah, menis let's say it's a liquid meniscus. We uh, uh, in the last tutorial under contact angle uh, or angle of contact, we can we call it angle of contact also. We learned how different types of uh, liquid uh, menisca menis menisca are formed here, right? Now, when a liquid menisca is formed, I'll quickly draw it. Uh, again, we will need. I will use different colors to indicate different surfaces. This is the solid surface, right? And this is the liquid. So, this is a liquid now and this is liquid, this is air, so more quickly air and uh, liquid, right. Air and liquid are in contact only in one interface. So, there is only one interface where air and uh, liquid are in contact. So, I will use this color. So, this is what we call the free surface, all right. So, there is one free surface. Why is that? Because only on the top of the liquid layer, it is in contact with air. So, free surface is a uh, surface where air and liquid are in contact. So, in li liquid meniscus, uh, in a liquid meniscus, there is only one free surface. Okay. Then let us consider second one, a liquid droplet, a liquid droplet. Okay. It, uh, it can be water drop, it can be any other liquid, does not matter, any liquid. So, normally liquid drop looks like this, this is how a liquid drop looks like, yeah, fine. And uh, again, when it comes to liquid drop, you have the liquid inside and you have the air outside. And again, there is only one surface which is uh, differentiating or there is only one interface here, that is this, I will draw outside or in, in outside like this. This is the interface uh, which is in contact with both liquid and air, see, it is in contact with liquid as well as air. So, there is only one free surface, okay. So, when there is only one free surface, when you use these equations, you have to use one. Now, when you say energy, surface tension into surface area into one, because there is only one free surface, right. Now, there are certain instances where there might be two free surfaces. Okay, so now you might be able to relate. Let's see if you can, uh, if you, if your guesses were correct, right? So the next one you have to know is uh, a soap bubble. Now think of a soap bubble. Now when I say soap bubble, a soap bubble is going to look like this. Yeah. So what is this part, the blue blue color line? That is the soap solution. Correct. That is the soap solution. So that is the liquid. But the difference here is you will have air inside as well as outside. Okay, so here there are two interfaces. Now look at this in the look at this interface I'm drawing. 
this much this the, uh, the red color sphere i'm drawing yeah so the red color sphere i'm drawing it is in contact with air as well as blue color what is the blue color one the liquid so that is one and also i can draw another similar surface on the outside yeah like this the red color line the red color one yeah if you take that outside one that is that is also in contact with the blue color liquid and air so here you have to know that there are two two free surfaces not one so for a surface like this if you want to find the uh, surface energy stored you will have to use this equation and multiply that by two multiply that by two because there are two surfaces uh, on the outside surface there will be some uh, liquid particles which are on the surface like this and on the inside surface also there will be liquid particles on the inside right and the last one uh, fourth case a thin liquid film what is a thin liquid film uh, imagine you have some soap in your hand and then uh, you take a you take a you know small piece of uh, a needle or something right imagine this is a needle all right then you uh, touch that soap solution a little bit and then you pull it what will you get you will get a small layer of soap we call it a film a thin film like a polythene sheet ah yeah like this you'll get something like this yeah so soap solution nothing then you okay even with your hand feeling finger you can do it. you touch it and you take it like this then something like this will be created yeah so this is what you call a liquid film a uh, soap film something like that a liquid film so you, you see there is one bottom surface and there is top surface there are two surfaces they are also uh, when you draw a liquid film we normally draw a liquid film like this a liquid film being created like this so i just draw it like this right so the blue color line is the liquid they are also two free surfaces one on top where it is in contact with air and liquid and there's a one at the bottom that is in contact with air and liquid as well so there again two free surfaces okay so for these situations when you want to use this equation or this equation i will explain in the next tutorials as to how you can you should use these equations you have to multiply these equations by one because there's only one free surface but here in these situations if it's a soap bubble or a thin liquid film there are two free surfaces you so you have to multiply these equations by 